Hey guys, today I'm going to talk to you about paper one. Before we get started, I just want to make a disclaimer that this is not me writing the paper for you. This is just me helping you out with the paper. So there's still a lot of work to be done, but most of the time when my students have the first paper, you get a little anxious and you need a little help about where to even start. So I thought I could help you out at least with that. All right, we're going to go through a series of steps. Now, step one sounds really simple, but you'd be amazed at how many people just don't do it. Step one is to read the prompt. So the prompt for this paper is, while the Chesapeake and New England colonies were settled by people from the same region in Europe, they were fundamentally different. What were those differences, and why did they exist? So now that we just know what the prompt is, our step two is to figure out how to use the documents that I've given you in the argument to be able to write a paper. Best thing to do is to usually figure out how to take the prompt and break it down into the different sides of the argument. So, for example, we have the Chesapeake and New England colonies. So it's going to be best for us just to go through each document and figure out which document does the side belong to. Is it telling me information about the Chesapeake region or is it telling me information about the New England region? Remember, the Chesapeake region is the southern colonies like Jamestown. The New England region is the northern colonies like Massachusetts. So what we want to do is we want to look at the source. And if we look at the source, we can probably be able to figure out if it belongs more to the New England colonies or the Chesapeake colonies. If we look at source A, we see it's by John Winthrop. Now, if you've done your vocabulary, you'll know that John Winthrop was the governor of the New England colonies. So therefore, document A is going to be belonging to the New England colonies. I want you to look at document B, and I want you to try to figure out which one you think this belongs to. I'm going to give you a couple seconds and try to just make a guess inside your head. Literally, I actually want you to do this. So if you looked at document B, you should have read that this is a list of immigrants coming to New England, so therefore this is also the New England colonies. So if we go back to our chart, we write down document A and B both on the New England side. If we look at document C, we can see that it's another list and it's people going to Virginia because Virginia is a southern colony. We're going to put that with the Chesapeake region. So if we go back to our table, we'll see that that belongs to document C is the Chesapeake. For D, it says Springfield, Massachusetts, uh, the Articles of Agreement for Springfield, Massachusetts, because Massachusetts is where? The New England colonies, we know that that is a New England document. Next one's a little bit harder. You look at wage and price regulations in Connecticut. You gotta think about where Connecticut is Definitely not in the South, so if you were just using a logical standpoint, that would also be a New England colony document. So we go back to our chart, and we see that right now we just have one document, document C for the Chesapeake, document A, B, D, and E all belong to New England. And our final documents, if you look at document F, you'll see it belongs to Captain John Smith. It's a history of Virginia. Again, Virginia is in the Chesapeake, so that's going to be a Chesapeake document. The last two are a little bit harder, but again, you got key words all over the place. You see something that this is from William Berkeley about uh, trying to defend the Virginia colony against a Dutch attack. Since that's got Virginia in it, that's right, it is going to be a Chesapeake document. And then we have Bacon's Manifesto. You want to take a guess at who wrote this? I promise you there is only one guy we talk about in all of U.S. history with the last name of Bacon. Same guy. The guy who led the rebellion called Bacon's Rebellion. This is all of his thoughts. And since we know Bacon's Rebellion took place in Jamestown, that is also going to be a Chesapeake document. And so if we go back to our chart one more time, now you'll see that document C, F, G and H are all Chesapeake documents. A, B, D, and E are all New England documents. So now you know which documents belong with the region. Now step three, you have to look at the rubric. And I want you just to look at this rubric and we need to start making a list of things that you need. You have to earn seven points to make a 100 or to get a perfect paper. 
Now, some of these steps are very easy or some of these points are very easy. Some of them are a little bit harder. This is a list that I've made. You can see that the top is a thesis statement. If you stay actually with me all the way through, you will see that I give you a thesis statement that I think is a pretty good one. The next one is one that students a lot of times struggle with, but you don't necessarily need to struggle with, and it's called contextualization. Again, if you look back at the rubric, all this wants me or all this wants you to do is to take the events that are taking place and connect it to the bigger picture of what's going on in the world. So, for example, if you look at the document of Virginia immigrants coming to the United States or coming to the southern colonies, you'll see that they're mostly men. We talked about this in class, so I'm not giving you any new information, but they're mostly men. Contextualization would be you explaining why it's mostly men. It'd be that they were mainly working manual labor, farming, things like that, that this was more of a business trip for them, that they weren't planning to stay permanently. So because of those things, it's going to mainly attract men more than women. All right. So you need to make sure you have contextualization in this paper as well. You also need to try to use six documents. That's that's it. That's There's nothing much more to say about that. Uh, you need one piece of outside information. If you can't find one thing that's not in the documents that we're talking about, then you're probably also not going to get either the contextualization point or the deeper analysis point. Like This is a very easy point to get, but you need to have some outside information despite what's just directly stated in the documents. Then you need three document analysis, which we're going to talk about in just a second. And then the last point is the hardest point to get, and that's deeper analysis. And I want you just to read about deeper analysis in the rubric, and that's something that we're not necessarily going to focus on too much right now. But deeper analysis would be a constant comparison or contrasting of the new col or the colonies. It would just mean that your argument is very well constructed and that you are constantly sticking to your thesis. All right, so for these three document analysis, we've called them OPVs, all right? That stands for origin, purpose, and value. Now, I've put an example of the OPV that we did in class of what this should actually look like in your paper. If you see right here, it says, in John Winthrop's A Model of Christian Charity, he explains what he wants his new colony's purpose to be a model Christian community. He wants them to be a city on a hill. You can see that that's how I want you to source your documents when you're pulling information from it. This is a valuable insight because it's going to, because he is going to be the governor of this colony and a decision maker. Due to this, it can be seen that the New England um, always had a planned Christian influence. So from this, that is how I want you to put your OPVs in there. It should be a natural inclusion into your argument. You can see right below there I have now link this to your argument. This is when you should start going back and talking about why this relates back to your thesis. Okay. Now, if you look at the next one, you can just see like I've added color so you can see where the origin is actually placed, where the purpose is placed, and where the value is placed. So I told you guys I wanted to give you two other OPVs so that you could use them, and I've done it for document D and E. Now you can read this yourself. Uh, the biggest thing that I want you to see is for your values. Uh, after you use your value, again, you have to link that back to the argument. That doesn't just stand like, okay, this is a cool document, I'm done. Now you have to be able to take this document and use it to be able to prove your thesis. What is your, pre your thesis stating and how are you able to prove it? I'm not going to go through these individual OPVs. You can use them. If you want to use different ones, feel free. All right, so my final thoughts are, first, I want to give you the thesis. And you don't have to use this thesis. If you have another thesis, then you can use that. But even though it is long, it is one statement. It is an argument, and then it has its reasoning attached to it. It says, even though the Chesapeake and New England colonies came from the same region in Europe, they were fundamentally different because of their purpose and why they were established, which attracted different people groups to each colony, and finally led to totally different societies. 
So why is this a good thesis? Well, one, I'm using the same wording from the prompt, something that you should definitely do and make sure that your thesis is answering the prompt question and not some other question that you've made up in your mind. Two, it's broad, so you have a lot of information that you can pull from. And then three, it relates directly to the documents. <clears throat> All right, so if this is your thesis uh, where it says purpose, uh, you're able to pull that from like document A for New England, like it shows what the purpose was. If you look at the John Smith document, I can't remember what letter that is, but the History of Virginia one, you can kind of see what the purpose is from there. We've also talked about that in class, so that could also be outside information that you're pulling from there. Different people groups coming in to the colonies, those should be the obvious documents. That's document B for New England, document C for the Chesapeake region, and finally, which led to totally different societies, which would be all the remainder documents, which kind of shows what the societies ended up looking like, and there's a ton to pull from, from there. And my last thought to give to you before you're writing this paper is always stick to the thesis. You should always be relating this back to the thesis. And the easiest way to do that is you have a three-pronged thesis right here. So you have one that says purpose for why they were established, which led to different people groups, and finally totally different societies. So have one paragraph comparing the different purposes. What was the New England's purpose? What was the Chesapeake's purpose? Second paragraph, describe the different people groups from each colony. All right. And then your third paragraph being, which led to totally different societies. This would be a really long paragraph where you could do one paragraph talking about what did the society of the Southern colonies look like, comparing that to the New England colonies. And how can you use documents to prove that you have an opening, you have a conclusion, that's your five paragraph um, paper, and you're going to be right up at your 800 word limit uh, if you do all this correctly. All right. Good luck. And um, yeah, that's it.